I've just completed a study of moistening ant triggers and produced about 100 pages of calculations and data and statistics. And um, the way the moistened again trigger works is, is that we've got a firing pin spring and we've got a sear spring and that's the force, causes the force, and then we have where the forces rub, we have the uh, cocking piece, part of the bolt, right here rubs on the sear as so, and when the sear is pulled down it lets the cocking piece go forward so we can polish the back of the sear and we can polish um, the front of this cocking piece that has almost no effect. The trigger and the and the sear rub on each other. Um, the uh, trigger pulls the sear down and uh, we can polish where the where the sear meets the trigger that has almost no effect. We can polish the inside of the trigger in the square box where the where the sear reaches through, we can take a piece of emery paper, this emery paper, and we can slice off a piece and we can put it through the center of the the uh, trigger and then we can shoe shine back and forth until we polish that. And uh, if you do polish parts, uh, which probably isn't worth it, but if you do, you need to get a lubrication on it before you try it out because if you measure the trigger force, you'll see the trigger force quickly start to grow higher and higher as the parts gall against each other without a lubricant. So probably what's best is wax or and not as good as oil and, and grease. So what I have found is that the whole thing is dominated by the sear, by the sear spring, and the uh, I've, I've taken four triggers, four sears, five bolts, one receiver, and that makes a lot of possibilities. And I've tried polishing those and how much improvement at each step it makes, and it makes uh, virtually no improvement. And you, and you change the firing pin spring, you can take it out and just barely push on the cocking piece with your thumb and the the uh, force required on the trigger to make the trigger release is almost unchanged. So we focus on the sear. You can get into a, a Hubbard trigger which doesn't do much good. You can get into a um, Timney trigger which does do some good. They start at about three pounds and I uh, but adjusted this one down to a pound and a half and it gives it a safety, so that that is some improvement. This is a moistened again receiver. We're going to test the trigger force. It's uh, four and a half pounds. That's four and a half pounds. That's pretty repeatable. And we're going to test the threshold, the beginning of the sear moving. And that's right at about nine pounds. Here we have the sear zeroed up with the dial indicator and the vise. And if we push on the sear with a force gauge until we are pushing with a force of about eight and a half pounds, we see that we've moved the, the dial about 65 thousandths. We push on the sear, three turns around would be 0.3 inches, and we're just starting to get a little bit of overbending the spring, there's 25 thousandths, bend. There's 50 thousandths. There's 55 thousandths. There's 95 thousandths, so slightly overbent. There's our 75 thousandths we want. Okay, we bent the sear, and now we see that the sear spring start force is uh, is somewhere around between two to three pounds and this will have an effect on the trigger force measuring two and a half pounds two and a 
two and a half pounds, so that seems to have made an improvement.